Diabetes is a disease that is gathering much attention recently. It is on the rise in today's society, with no end in sight. For example, it was seen that in 2000, the prevalence of diabetes in all age groups across the world was 2.4%, with 171 million people having diabetes. In fact, it is expected that in 2030, this number will increase to 4.4%, and 366 million people will have diabetes. Before we explain type 2 diabetes, there are a few terms that need to be described. Firstly, the body uses glucose, found in almost all the foods you eat, to create energy and sustain bodily functions. Glucose is regulated by two different hormones that arise from the pancreas, glucagon and insulin. Glucagon plays a role in increasing blood glucose when there's a shortage, so that the body has access to more glucose and therefore more energy. Insulin is released when there is too much glucose in the blood, and the body tissues need to reabsorb all this glucose and store it. In essence, glucagon and insulin are opposites. Insulin decreases blood sugar, glucagon increases blood sugar. Now that we understand the role of insulin, we can understand what happens when insulin is not being used properly, as in the case of type 2 diabetes. In type 2 diabetes, we see that the body cells become resistant to the effects of insulin. As a result, the body can't remove the extra glucose in the blood as efficiently. This results in a condition called hyperglycemia. It is thought that there is both an environmental and genetic component of type 2 diabetes. This was seen in a twin study performed by Pernille Poulsen in 2009, who saw that twins had a higher risk of type 2 diabetes than singleton children. Over time, individuals with type 2 diabetes have higher risk of complications such as cardiovascular disease, diabetic nephropathy, diabetic neuropathy, and various forms of cancer. Now, there aren't any clear symptoms that indicate you may have diabetes. If you think you do have diabetes, you must visit a physician for a formal diagnosis. That being said, patients with type 2 diabetes can present with some or none of the following symptoms. Frequent urination, excessive thirst, unexplained weight loss, extreme hunger, feeling tired much of the time, and tingling or numbness in hands and feet. Essentially, the Canadian Diabetes Association defines diabetes with two main measurements. The first one being fasting plasma glucose, which measures glucose levels after a period of fasting. Anything greater than or equal to 7 millimoles per liter can be suggestive of diabetes. Secondly, there is a glycated hemoglobin or HbA1c scale. The amount of glucose attached to red blood cells can predict blood glucose levels over a larger period of time, as in months. Anything greater than or equal to 6.5% can predict development of retinopathy, and so both of these measurements together can permit diagnosis of diabetes. To lower the risk of type 2 diabetes, one must live a healthy and physically active lifestyle. Being physically active for at least 30 minutes a day can control your weight and reduce your body fat. Further, resistance training can improve glycemic control in diabetes. In studies of Asian populations, it is seen that increased intake of white rice is associated with increased risk of type 2 diabetes. So, substituting brown rice for white rice can offer many more nutrients and can actually lower your risk of diabetes. Also, greater consumption of whole fruits, such as blueberries, grapes, bananas, and apples, are associated with lowered risk of type 2 diabetes. In addition, Increased consumption of walnuts is associated with lowered weight gain, ultimately reducing the risk of diabetes. Lastly, what kind of treatments are available to those who suffer from type 2 diabetes? Well, there are three common treatments that are used today. Insulin treatment, oral hypoglycemic drugs, and dietary modifications. Insulin is used later in the course of diabetes so that you could increase insulin levels in your body and ultimately reduce blood glucose. It must be injected into the body, usually every day. Alternatively, there are oral hypoglycemic drugs, such as metformin, that can cause the cells in your body to become more sensitive to insulin and allow for better uptake of glucose from the blood. Unlike many other diabetes drugs, metformin does not risk causing hypoglycemia as a side effect. Lastly, it is important to center your diet on eating high fiber, low fat foods such as fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, as well as lowering your intake of refined sugars and sweets. Diabetes is projected to rise substantially in the next few decades. There are 86 million Americans that currently are at risk of developing type 2 diabetes mellitus, which is 9.4% of the American population. While only so many drugs can be made, there is no drug that can cure diabetes. It is up to us to eat properly, be physically active, and live healthy lifestyles. That is how we can truly knock diabetes to the curb. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos.